Investing is as much about human emotion and in predicting the actions of other investors as it is about picking fundamentally sound stocks, regions and assets. In September, Bank of America surveyed 224 fund managers with $646 billion in assets under management to find out where they think the market is going in 2021. In this episode, we're dissecting what these market leading investors think is about to happen and how it will help us invest through a likely turbulent market this winter. Let's check it out. Welcome to MillionChapman.com, the investment and finance channel and website that sets you and your finances free. That was Andy and I'm Ben and if you like what we say, hit the like button and click subscribe. Fundamentally optimistic. When asked the big question, when is a COVID vaccine going to arrive? Investors are predicting that a vaccine for COVID-19 will be available in the first quarter of 2021 with 37% believing that a credible vaccine will be announced by the end of January. Let that sink in for a second. A majority of market plays are being made on the assumption that life will be back to normal by March next year, with over a third of investors looking as near term as January. To us, this is incredibly optimistic, to the point of foolishness, but whether you're an optimist or a pessimist like us, who believe a working vaccine is still many months away, if ever. Knowing how the market thinks will work in your favour, many stocks will rise or fall depending on the answer to that question. A vaccine by spring 2021 means that planes are flying, office working resumes, physical shops survive, nightlife isn't curfewed, people keep their jobs and money moves around the banking and housing sectors. No vaccine by spring 2021 means the opposite of all these things. The world will bounce back. 58% of investors say that a new bull market has begun compared to just 25% in May and the majority are predicting global growth will rise in the next 12 months. For the first time since February, more investors are saying that the global economy is in an early cycle phase rather than being in a recession. Early cycle phases follow recessions and it means that the world economy is starting a climb back to strength. This may very well be true. The world is a big place and not everywhere is going to shut down their economies at the first sign of cases rising. While here in the UK our first instinct is to economic shutdown, mass unemployment and a removal of freedoms, in countries which realise they can't afford the luxury of a second lockdown, they will instead allow their economies off the leash. In many regions of the world, people will be allowed to continue making their livings and help building their countries back to wealth. Cash jitters. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though. While investors do on the whole think of recovery is more likely than not, they are not so confident to put all their money where their mouth is. Cash levels rose amongst fund managers up from 4.6% to 4.8%. This doesn't sound like much, but we're talking 4.8% of trillions of investable dollars here. The normal range is between 4% greed and 5% fear. 4.8% from 4.6% puts them 20 basis points closer to fear on the scaredometer. Fund managers are hopeful, but edgy. Rotating away from large growth stocks. Fund managers are rotating away from large cap growth stocks like the FANG stocks after the massive rallies from March lows. We think investors are turning away from big tech too early. We think it has a lot of room still to run, despite being at all-time highs, which we think is the sticking point for fund managers. They struggle to justify continuing to buy big tech stocks when the P-E ratios are running into the high double digits. We've covered this plenty before, like in this video about the FANG stocks, but just to recap, there is a ton of growth opportunity still for all the big tech companies, especially if you're more pessimistic about the COVID situation than the market seems to be right now. More lockdowns mean more opportunity for cyberspace to take over. Tech is still there. Despite investors slowing down on their purchases of tech, it's still there in their portfolios as the most popular positions overall. Current investments into tech are still the most crowded trade area of all time. The tech-heavy Nasdaq has surged 60% since March lows. Value stocks are more popular. Money has been flowing out of growth stocks into value stocks, but on a targeted basis. Value stocks, which are stocks trading at a low price earnings ratio, are more popular than stocks trading on a higher price earnings ratio for the first time since the pandemic started. However, value stocks whose industries are in particular trouble, energy companies and banks, are still being avoided. This means it could be a good time to buy oil and banks. If you are a value investor and believe in their long-term potential, these stocks are being shunned by the market right now. Oil stocks have returned to the lows last seen in March after shooting up over the summer. We still believe that the future needs oil, we just don't need much of it right now while planes are not flying and cars are not commuting. It strikes us that the market is being short-sighted on oil, which is why we're holding our positions in BP and Shell. Small caps are up. 
Fund managers are shunning large cap stocks and turning to small cap stocks, which we've been saying for some time now are the end of the market best poised for growth as we move towards a redesigned economy in 2021. Only 14% of professional investors said they think large caps will outperform small caps, the lowest outlook on large cap stocks since July 2018. So looking for small caps with strong fundamentals is growing in popularity. There will be a flood of companies going bankrupt and entering the history books before this crisis is over. Investors are picking the future winners from the small cap pool of stocks which will replace them. A relatively undiscovered gem in my portfolio is Dot Digital, a digital marketing platform. It's a UK small cap tech company with a market cap of £408 million, which soared on the news of harsher lockdown measures in late September. Looking at its fundamentals is a very good bet to be one of the future winners. It's a high quality stock with great returns and just look at its track record on earnings per share and dividend growth. Its health scores on Stockopedia have it as incredibly safe, backed up by a big pile of cash, which is what negative debt means. Hopefully we won't be referring to it as a small cap for very long. Start investing without any fees by using the free trade app and you'll be given a free share on sign up worth up to £200 when you use our link on moneyunshackle.com linked to below. Always do your own research, but if you are interested in Dot Digital, you can find it on free trade along with thousands of other stocks and ETFs. Biggest risks. The biggest risks to the stock market are seen as one, a COVID second wave, two, a tech bubble popping, and three, the upcoming US election. Obviously, a second wave of COVID would cause a high level of disruption. As for a tech bubble, we don't think there is one, at least not across the majority of tech stocks. Yes, all tech companies do seem to be priced highly right now, but that is merely reflecting their future profit making potential. Some have silly prices and some will come to nothing. But a company like Amazon with a PE of 100 probably does have the potential to grow and grow. Did you know that it's only currently in 18 countries? Its logo is on my TV screen, on piles of packaging near my front door, on my music player, on my ebook reader, and all over cloud software being adopted by more and more companies every day. As for the US election, this is another potential game changer. If Trump wins, it's more of the same for the US stock market, which reacted favourably to his tax cuts and has seen four years of solid growth. If the Democrats get in, it could be worse for US stocks, if only in the sense that if something is already trading at an all-time high, changing the rules is more likely to make it fall. But they may do better with calming the trade wars with China. Who knows? But the Democrats are likely to increase taxes and regulations on big companies. Investors still love America. Despite dialing down on tech and healthcare, the US is now even more favoured by investors than in preceding months. The Eurozone, emerging markets and UK are generally less popular except for some UK value stocks. We think investors need to be careful here. While we agree that the US is home to the world's best companies, that awesomeness is very much priced in to share prices. The price earnings ratio of the S&P 500 is 24, while the UK's FTSE 100 is just 15. The UK is being shunned by investors right now and we ourselves have been critical of the FTSE 100 for being full of dinosaur industries like mining and retail. But it's wrong to ignore the UK completely. When everyone else is shunning the market, it's probably time to invest. We're currently having fun investing in individual UK stocks to get the best of British without the turds. But an arguably equal strategy would be to go heavier into FTSE 100 and FTSE 250 ETFs now while prices are so suppressed. Enough companies are being undervalued right now but we think making a small increase to your UK positions might be worthwhile, assuming you're not already overly exposed. Just be aware that it can take a long time for the market to re-rate stocks. Question of the day, do you think we're approaching a crash or a recovery? And what are you investing in to turn this to your advantage? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. On this channel, we talk a lot about personal finance, investing in all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is moneyunshackled.com. See you next time.